Okay, we prepared the plane for takeoff. Now, just a few more steps before we actually take flight. I switched the right MFD back to the system display. And you can see the plane is not pointing straight up. This is the north up mode. I like uh, the track up mode. So what you do is you just click on menu, then you click on enter and then menu again. And now you are in the track up mode. And I like that a lot better. Now on the left MFD, there's also a small map, the, this so-called inset. I like to turn it off. So that's what I do. And while we're at the left um, MFD, we may as well change the transponder mode from on to altitude so that ATC and other aircraft can see our altitude. The other aircraft can if they have TCAS. We turn on the pitot heat and the landing light. Uh, landing light, obviously, because we want to operate it after takeoff and the pitot heat we need to run every time we're in icing conditions. I like to run it all the time during flight because uh, then I don't have to worry about if I'm in icing conditions or not. You don't want to run the pitot heat on the ground for a long time because there's insufficient cooling and it could get too hot, but during flight it's not problematic and it just uses some electricity. Now, as we approach the runway, I like to stop, especially in a small aircraft like this, and then take a good look to the left and the right, check the approach sector, check the runway if there are any other aircraft, because even if you have clearance to enter the runway, people make mistakes and uh, running into another aircraft can really ruin everyone's stay. So we enter the runway, check that strobe lights are working. Of course, here in the SR-22, they're already working because we don't have a rotating beacon and we turned them on pretty much first thing before starting the engine. Now you go towards the center line, even if you have a very wide runway like this, you always want to stay on the center line as much as possible because if you have a contingency like a tire failure or even a sudden gust of wind from the side, you need all the runway that you can get to recover from that. Before you take off, you want to lean your engine for the best power. It gives the best takeoff performance. So what we do here, we have this little power indication in the top left corner of the screen. So we increase the throttle until we're maybe at 65% or so. And then we start leaning the engine. This uh, actually makes it perform better because the mixture is optimal for burning. And you can see that by the little power value there increasing to 67. If I pull any further, it's back to 66. So I found the best power point and we're ready to take off. Look straight ahead, release the brakes, make sure the plane goes straight, then add full power, throttle forward all the way. And you just need the rudder pedals at this point, no differential braking because the propeller strips the slipstream is strong enough. 75 knots approximately, nose goes up almost 15 degrees, 12 to 15. And then you should be climbing out just under 80 knots. This uh, speed does not change much with weight, maybe five knots at the most. So if you're just under 80 knots, you should be okay. Initially, we're tracking the runway center line, climbing to about 500 feet, and then we push down the nose just under 10 degrees pitch, and you see the speed increases, we accelerate. At uh, 90 knots, we're raising the flaps to up, and of course, this uh, makes our nose pitch down, so you need to get ready to hold it up. Here we go. See, so slight pitch down, holding the nose up, and then you can relieve this uh, need to pull back on the yoke with the trim. Of course, on every airplane, except Airbuses, uh, you always want to trim all the time. You always want to be able to let go of the yoke and then uh, have the plane not pitch up or down violently. So basically, you want to be able to fly it with uh, just two fingers with a very light touch. So you need to trim all the time. Turning left here towards Manhattan, and um, we have increased speed to about 110, 120 knots. That's a good speed for climb out. It's a little faster than the best angle of climb speed, but uh, this uh, helps in cooling the engine if you go a little faster. 
and also increases visibility over the nose because the pitch is just a little bit lower. We hold back uh, power to about 90% to uh, get off the takeoff power and uh, go to climb power. And I want to show you how to use the autopilot. Just click on the AP button down there and you can see those little green letters there uh, popped up and it says AP autopilot is engaged in roll and pitch. It will just initially hold whatever roll and pitch values you had when engaging and you can use the scroll wheel there on the autopilot panel to raise or lower the nose. A better mode is heading. If you click on the heading button you see the little heading buck. The blue one snapped to the front. It synchronizes it and then pushing down on the heading button will engage the heading mode and the plane will roll to maintain the heading that you select with the heading button. Now um, you can see that we had set 3000. We did that before. The plane is still in pitch mode and you will observe that it will happily climb past 3000. It does not level off in the pitch mode. It just holds whatever pitch value you have set. If you click on the altitude button, it will level off at whatever altitude you had when you clicked the button. But of course, this is uh, we don't want to be at 3065, so we change the value to 5000 and we use the flight level change, FLC mode. And the flight level change mode engages with a certain speed, whatever the speed is that you had when you engaged it, 142 in our case. And again, with the scroll wheel, we can change this speed and we dial it down to 120 knots and you will see the plane pitches up to regain this speed and then it will automatically hold that speed in the climb or it works the same in the descent by just pitching up the airplane. This is a very safe mode. You cannot really run out of airspeed or overspeed because the autopilot will maintain the speed and uh, this is uh, a mode I can recommend for climbing and descending. You could also use vertical speed um, but then you need to watch all the time uh, in case you get too fast or too slow. The little beep there was the alert that we're approaching the set altitude uh, 1000 feet before reaching and you can see that we have a white Alt S up there that means the plane will actually level off at the altitude that we have pre-selected. Now I have already selected the engine display again on the right side in preparation for leaning uh, for the cruise flight. When you are at cruise flight level or even during the climb, if you climb to a high altitude, you want to make sure that the airplane, uh, the engine is always leaned because the pressure of the air gets lower and you want to reduce the amount of fuel as well so that the mixture stays uh, constant and, and the way you want it. Here's the 5,000 feet. So we are reducing power. Cruise power is between 55 and 85 percent. Uh, 75 is a good value. And um, I'm leaning now. You can see the EGT, the second column from the left there, is rising because the mixture gets hotter and hotter as the mixture gets better and better. And there's a certain point where it peaks. This is the, called the chemically correct mixture. This is where it runs the hottest. And you want to be just a little bit on the lean side of that. So find the peak and then pull back until you're about 50 degrees Fahrenheit below that. That's the best economy for the cruise flight. And if you are 75 degrees Fahrenheit on the rich side of the peak, then you're at the best power point. And that's how you can find the correct mixture for the altitude that you're flying at. Turn on the boost or turn off the boost pumps now. Usually you want to leave it running for 30 minutes uh, after reaching your top of climb. But uh, for the sake of this video, I've turned it off now. And um, just to show you, and if you forget, it doesn't really matter. You can just leave it to uh, run the whole flight.